There are several thousand individual items in Tarkov, and with the dynamic economy, keeping track of what's worthwhile and what isn't is impossible for most players. What ends up happening is players do one of two things. They either pick up everything they find in raid, or they pick up a handful of items that they know are valuable. And both of these methods leave a ton of loot in raid. I know because I frequently find this loot after players have already passed through. Now this here list isn't about every item, because that would just be dumb. Nor is it about items that we already, everybody already knows are worth a ton, like lead X's or graphics cards. There'd be no point in me putting those on a list. We already know they're all valuable. So what is this video gonna be? It's gonna be a list of items you're probably overlooking in raid that are worth a bunch of money, as well as some items you're picking up that you probably shouldn't be. Now I know most of these videos go from F to S or bottomed up, whatever you wanna talk about it, but that's annoying. And you'll probably just skip to the part of the video that has the S tier anyways. So we'll start out right out the gate with the best loot. All right, so our S tier items, if you will, are items that are worth a bunch of money uh, that I just wanna point out and make sure you're seeing. We'll start off with a couple of weapon parts and magazines. The MP7 mag. Now this works for the 30 rounders too, but the 40 rounders more importantly are worth a ton. You can see here, somebody's listening it for almost 100,000. I don't think anybody will pay that. But I regularly sell these things for 40, 50, 60,000 rubles without much trouble. And along with that is the Ash 12 mag. And uh, these will go anywhere from 35 to 45,000, usually pretty regularly. So another good item, even though there are two slots to pick up to sell on the flea market. Now, after that, we have the uh, MK47. This is the mutant longer barrel, the, the, the 409 millimeter. This would be the long barrel for any of the meta builds out there. And even from the trader, it's 33,000, which makes it worthwhile. But you can sell this thing for 70, 80, sometimes 100,000 rubles without much too much effort. So if when I see it, I happily pick it up, even though it's a three slot item. And then one of my long standing favorites, something that I still don't understand why people spend so much money on it is the Rotor 43 pistol grip and buffer tube for the ASVAL. Now this is actually on the cheaper end, 45, 50,000. I usually sell these things for 75, 80, even 90,000 rubles. And the reason this is is because you can't actually buy it from a trader. The only way you can get it is from a mechanic with a barter. And why people are willing to spend 80,000 versus buy a pack of milk um, and barter for it is beyond me, but there you go. Now after this, we will look at ammo real quick. And even though they removed BT from the flea market, which sucked because it made things like Rashala guards and you know some of the other stuff you'd find around uh, Tarkov worth a bunch of money. It's not anymore now, you can only use it, you can't sell it, but BP has gone up in price because of that. And because BP has gone up in price, it's 100% worth keeping. Now, even on the worst of days, you can sell it for 442 rubles like this guy did here. Uh, and that's gonna be worth, you know, about 20 to 22,000 rubles, depending on your, your flea market uh, commission rate. Uh, so that's a stack of 60. So that's a 20,000 ruble stack, one item. Now, if you're selling it for like five, six, 700 rubles, you know, you start pushing that 30, 35, 40,000 rubles per slot for a stack of 60. So even the 30 stacks are worth picking up. So don't pass up on BP, especially if you find one of those 120 round boxes, they're worth a ton. Now, two loot items that a lot of people don't realize and are everywhere in Tarkov are security vests and scav vests. Now you might think, you know, why are these things selling? Uh, the scav vest for crafting, the security vest for crafting, Though I can't really explain the security vest. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me why people buy that, but they do. Uh, scav vests will go anywhere from like 10, 11K. And right now it doesn't look like there's any on the market, which is unfortunate because I want to be able to show them to you. Uh, but they will go anywhere from, you know, 10, 11K. Right now you could probably list one for 30, 40K and it'll sell because there's none on the market. I usually list for somewhere around 20 to 15 just because that's where they're at, but it, it's free. It takes up six slots. You can put six slots worth of stuff in it it goes nicely in your bag and just that little extra bit of loot you can get out of raid with. Now security vests, they're a little bit different. They go anywhere from like 10, 12, all the way up to 30. Again, I usually shoot for about 20,000 to sell them. Uh, people buy them up for those crafts for whatever reason. Now over to pliers, all of the pliers uh, for the most part are worth keeping. Um, I don't know if like the nippers, those are not really worth it, but uh, the round pliers, the regular pliers, the elite pliers. Now, if you look at just straight up at what they sell to the vendors, uh, the right, the round pliers and the elite sell for a ton and the, the, the regular yellow pliers don't. But the key here is in your hideout, and I can actually show you because my craft is done, uh, they are easily craftable into round pliers. So you take a yellow plier, turn it into round pliers, so that basically makes the yellow pliers worth 17, 18K just to the vendor. You don't even have to lift them on the flea market, though you can get a little bit more sometimes, especially for the elites. Sometimes these will push into like the 20, 22,000 range, uh, but they're pretty much just vendor loot for me. I get them, I vendor them. And then after that is one that I've looked over that I didn't realize was so valuable, but you have AFAX. Now I have this 280 out of 400 AFAX, right? Wouldn't think it's worth much, 
Well, if I go look at therapist here, it sells for 18,000 to her. Now for a one slot, my cutoff is right around 180 out of 400. Anything less than that isn't really worth it on the AFAC, but 250, 280, 300, you can straight vendor those if you find them and they're worth their slot. Now, kind of a weird item like that, uh, that a lot of people might not realize are these M18 smoke grenades. Now I'll sell these things almost all day long for 15,000, but you can sometimes get away with 20 or 25,000 like right now where there's none on the market. People just wanna buy them. You can only get two or three of them from Peacekeeper on each reset. So there makes this market simply because they're not really all that 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 collected and sold. So there's a, a lack of supply, if you will. Now, melee weapons, and I bring up melee weapons for a specific reason. It's not that they're worth a ton of money. Like if you get an ax, these things are worth a ton of money, right? Uh, we'll go look at Jaeger here and see. So the ax is worth, you know, 56, 57,000, 11,000 on the crowbar, 10,000 on the bayonet. And there's other weapons out there that are worth quite a bit too, that you can get off scavs or raiders and scav bosses from time to time. But the important thing is, is if you go into raid without anything in your, your secure or in your sheath, it acts like a mini secure container. So if you grab a crowbar and you plop it in there that you find and you die, there's 10,000 rubles right there that you get out with that you wouldn't have otherwise. And even more so if you get the ax, that ax, as you can see, worth a ton of money you die with it hey guess what there's that 57,000 rubles that you get out with on top of what was in your secure container uh despite your death now the last two items groups of items we're going to talk about are keys uh specifically dorms 214 and 110 now you can sell these on the flea if you want but the big deal about them is is they are worth a ton of money to the, the, the therapist you can see 26,000 and almost 23,000 right here for these two keys. So as a single slot, if you find these in a jacket or a filing cabinet or wherever you're at, they're gonna be worth putting into your secure container, worth more than the thousand or 2000 rubles you might have in your docs case or anything else like that. And the same goes for stims across the board. Funny enough, the cheapest stim is the Propital, even though it's quite a bit more expensive on the flea, but morphines, adrenalines, anything you find they're worth putting in your secure container especially if you have obviously if you have a uh, injector case because that's going to be there as well because even if you die with them and can't sell them on the flea they vendor for a ton of money but that's the s tier list that's the top tier the stuff that i really wanted to point out to you the next list is going to be a tier and this is going to be more about items that are worth quite a bit of money but you might have to sit on them with a flea market or you have to list them in big groups things like that so to open up with the a tier items we'll start with the ammo right away and like bp pp ammo is also worth picking up believe it or not now usually you're selling this for 100 under 354 just because there's not a lot of people paying more than that but even at 353 rubles a stack you're talking about 10,000 for 30 rounds 20,000 for 60 120 rounds you know you, the math goes on and on you're gonna make a ton of money even with pp so while it might not be the best loot it's definitely not worth passing up because it's going to be worth more than some of the other stuff you're vendoring. And the same applies for 855. Every time I do this on stream, people laugh at me because I find a scab with an 8R and he's got three or four 30 round mags on him with 855. I'll start unloading them. And I do this while I'm sorting through loot or other things. And everybody's like, well, why are you taking 855? Isn't that garbage ammo? And yeah, it kind of is, but it still sells. And this is on the low end, uh, even at like 290 rubles, you're still making 15, 16, almost 20,000 off of a 60 stack of 855. But I usually actually sell this for quite a bit more, pushing 450, 500, sometimes even 600 rubles per round. So now you're talking like BP level. So yes, 855 is worth taking out a raid. Now after that is two weapon attachments that you'll very frequently find on scav bosses and regular scavs, especially the Laze Tac 2. And this is worth quite a bit simply because you need it in a gunsmith task. Now they'll go for under 23,000 or whatever, but you're still talking 20,000 on the flea market, if not more, sometimes 30 or 40 if you catch it just right, because again, people need these for the gunsmith task. And the same thing applies for the Klesh. Uh, it's not as sold as much, but it's also need for a gunsmith task. And you can push 15, 20,000 with this pretty regularly. Now, like S tier, we have a couple of mags here, though they're not worth as much as the other ones, they're definitely worth bringing up. The 30 round Val Mag, obviously worth a ton. It sells for 39,000 from proper by itself. So you can usually get 40, 45, sometimes even 50,000 for them. Not as often as the other mags, but they're still there worth taking out. And this goes for the 45 Vector Mag as well. Again, cheaper ways to get it, but usually sell it for 20 or 30,000 rubles when you find them. Now the, the MP9 Mag is interesting by itself because it's worth 20, 30,000 rubles and you'll get it in an MP9. And if I'm full of loot, very often I'll actually throw the MP9 out and keep the mag because it's worth more. As you can see here, I'll go look up the gun. 
and you can see the mp9s are selling for 18 20 000, which is pretty much what they vendor for so the mag is actually more expensive than the gun when it comes to selling it now after this we have some food items um particularly tarcola herring and squash these things are always worth taking out a raid you know if you do runs on interchange you already kind of know about them but i see them get left behind still and you can see tarcola was selling for over twenty thousand. herring's 25 30 though that's pretty high for it right now i would expect about 15 to 20 for it and squash is kind of cheap right now, though still worth taking out at 15, 16, because again, it'll push 20 by itself. And the reason these are worth so much is the Jaeger barter for the Holodink you can see here. Hot rods don't hold that much value because you can craft them, you can't take them out of raid. They're always propped up all white because people are always bartering for these things. But they're not the only food. Uh, Amelia Rise, and specifically Amelia Rise, not because you want to sell them, you don't. The flea market fee is going to kill you but I take these out of raid because I always use them to barter for sugar. Again, with Jaeger, five of them gets you sugar. And when sugar's selling for, you know, 65, 70,000, now you're talking 12, 13,000 a slot that you don't have to spend uh, to get your sugar. And then once sugar starts pushing 70 or 80, which it usually does, you end up saving quite a bit of money. And then the last oldie but goodie that's been a favorite for everybody for a long time is the condensed milk, simply because it sells to therapists for almost 16,000 rules, 15714. So it's a good item to take out. It's not the best, but I like picking it up because you can vendor it, you get rid of it easy. You don't have to flea market it. And if you find three of these things, you can swap them out for a, your serve 12 or two of them for your, your uh, CMS and it's worth more than those usually. Now, skip to the vitamins real quick. I wanna bring it up. Yes, it's worth vendoring, but it's all, or uh, flea marketing, but it's also worth vendoring as well, which is it's, why it's a good item. It's kind of like the, the condensed milk now, just almost 16,000, 15 to eight. Uh, so you're seeing these definitely take them out. They are worth selling. Now paid has always maintained its value in previous wipes simply because of therapist and her barter for her Salewas. But that's not the case anymore. Paid is worth so much more. And I link search that instead of searching for it on accident. Let me filter by item here. And you're going to see 20 on the low end, but 30, 35 on the high end. And the reason for this is, is because of proper and his barter. So whenever you see proper reset, when his clock gets close to resetting, um, and after that, you're gonna see it spike because you need three of these things for a single impact grenade and people are definitely doing that. So it'll burn through the flea market. You'll see this thing push 30,000. I take paids, I list them for about 25 usually and then call it a day. And then winding out the list a little bit here, we have motors. Um, I know that people in general know they're worth a bunch, but I don't know if they really realize that they are almost always worth taking out a raid. Right now we're seeing them on the 40,000, 45,000 and that's really low. It does not very very often it does not take much to push these into 60,000 rubles constantly and that's simply because of the mechanic barter for the weapon case which lots of people are doing now especially because you can't buy the thick item case or thick weapon cases off the flea anymore so people are doing this barter to get their thick weapon cases and it eats up eight motors so this burns through those pretty quickly and sticking along with mechanic trades we have the fuse now fuses are used to craft so they've got value there and on the low end they're worth picking up buying them if i see them under twelve thousand, i buy them up you'll see that in my crafting videos but they almost always sell for seventeen thousand as well or more you'll see them push 2022 and again it's because of a mechanic trade you have this few or the fuse one fuse for one vog 17 so it's a bit cheaper because vog 17s can be kind of pricey so people will come in and especially at 17 18 000 under these push 20 000 they'll buy the three fuses or five fuses and get their vogs instead of spending uh this on the flea market now to round out this list is dog tags now it might sound silly to say dog tags but I see a lot of people have like a level 40 dog tag or a 45 dog tag in their backpack and not their secure container. And the crazy part about that is, is they're worth a lot of money. If you're not like me, I just keep all my dog tags. I, I have a game we play and, you know, it's kind of a mini game we play inside. So I keep every dog tag I have. I have like seven or eight dog tag cases full right now. Um, and that can, that's a whole nother story. But for everybody else, when you're selling, you can see here level 35 is kind of a good cutoff maybe maybe you want to go 30 30 or 31 or 32 but anything above that and you're talking 13 14 15 000 rubles for a dog tag and i'll grab one of the higher level ones here uh we'll go look let's say let's grab a 47 and you can see that even a couple of levels starts pushing the value up even more and more. You're talking 18,000 just to vendor this to therapists. So keep that in mind. If you have those higher level dog tags, they are worth the money to therapists to swap out for some other stuff maybe you have in your secure container. Now for B tier, 
These are items that are either just worth vendoring. I pick them up. They usually get thrown out because they vendor for about 10K. Or if you want to sit on them on the flea market for a little bit, you can sell them in stacks and make, you know, start push that 15 to 20,000 rubles per item if you're willing to let them sit on the flea market. So starting off is rechargeable batteries, nippers, tubes, and pox rams. Now I say all four of these together because they're all right around 10K per a slot to therapist. You got 10, 11, 12, kind of depends. I find them, I pick them up. They're usually first to get tossed out, some of them, uh, but they are worth their slot. Now, the funny thing is hoses and poxerams or tubes and poxerams, sorry, can get to be worth quite a bit more. You can see 14, 15, 16,000 for tubes simply because of some of the crafting and hideout uses and poxerams because of barters. You'll see these push 17, 18, 20,000 rubles. Uh, so they are worth it if you're willing to, to sit on them for a bit. Otherwise, they are just great 10K per slot, 12K per slot vendor items to therapists. Now, two items that a lot of people run over in electronic stores are relays and ES lamps. Now, yes, you'll see relays down at 9, 10, 11K, but they almost always push 17, 18. They're real volatile because people buy up lots of them for the different parts of the hideout and things like that. And not a lot of people pick them up. So I'll pick them up. I usually get to where I have like 10 of them in my hideout or in my junk box, and then I'll list them for about 17, 18 K and they sell all the time. And the same rule applies for ES lamps and ES lamps have barters that drive them more specifically. So they, you do see them at higher levels, even 20, 25,000 sometimes. But again, my mark's about 18, 19,000. I pick up ES lamps and then I sell them in big stacks like that. Now the ALU splint's a little bit deal, it, different. Now, yes, a two out of five, you could still probably sell this on the flea market. I think people are selling them. I, I was seeing some in here for like 12, 14,000 for even a two out of five. But the reason these are more important is a craft. Now, if you're not into crafting, I get it. Uh, a, a partially used ALU splint is probably not worth it to you. But for me, I actually use these to craft up uh, Grizzlies quite a bit because it's one of the more expensive parts of it. So if you get in your ALU splint out of, out of raid from somebody you killed because they took it out and they had a two out of five or a one out of five, it's still worth about 15,000, even 20,000, depending on how you want to look at it, because Grizzlies sell for 40,000. Usually they'll be a little bit cheaper, but I frequently sell them for 40. And that's what I use ALU splints for. That's why I want to put it in kind of a B tier. It's not great, but it's something I, I still hang on to when I find it. And then lastly is backpacks. And this is more important for lower levels. Um, once you're higher level, you don't want to be trying to fit these backpacks into your rigs. But if you're on a scav run or anything else, all of these, these sell for quite a bit of money and they stack indefinitely. You can get six Burkuts, day packs, and even scav backpacks, stack them inside of one another, and then sell those on the flea when you get out or even just vendor them if you want to, because they're still worth, you know, the, the backpacks themselves are still worth a, a hefty sum to Ragman, but they they sell for quite a bit on the flea market. You know, you're pushing 20,000, 25,000 for the day pack. And the reason is, is this is one of the lightest packs you can carry. You know, you're 0.672 pounds versus 0.96. So that's what makes the day pack popular. But even the, the Burkuts are, are, are popular as well. You know, you're seeing them sell for 20, 25,000. Uh, and the duffel bags, don't skip out on duffel bags. They, they take up as much space in your inventory as they fill. So they're not adding anything other than the fact that it's a free like 15 to 20,000 rubles that you can sell it for on the flea market because people use these to craft uh, things like paracord. So they do sell. So just something to keep an eye out for. Again, not amazing S tier, A tier loot, but something that can add just a couple more 20, 30, 50,000 rubles to each of your raids when you get out and survive. Now our next category C tier here uh, is gonna be controversial for some folks, but it's more about point of discussion than anything. Now for me, I will still mostly pick up most of these items, but I'm a hoarder. As you can see, I have three scav junk boxes. I fill them full of loot and I sell them when I get lots of items. They're empty now because I've just got done selling everything, but uh, I'll pick these up. But I want to point out that they are tough to sell. Usually because of their volatility, you'll see them anywhere from 20, 25,000 rubles down to eight or 9,000. And if that's not what you want to mess with, that's the whole point of this category and it being C tier. The other stuff is easy. This stuff takes more work. Now we're going to open up with PSU because it's high right now. As you can see, you can get 40, 50,000 for PSUs, but most of the time, these are going to be around in that 25 to 30,000. So if when I'm picking loot up, PSUs are actually one of the earlier things I'll throw out uh, because they're kind of heavy. They take up a lot of space and I can almost always do better per slot with uh, four one items or two two items than that big one single four slot. 
And this applies to the chlorines and shampoos as too. Chlorine can be crazy. You can see it right now. We're pushing 30 or 40,000, but prices are high right now for this stuff because it's early in the morning. I'm filming this about nine o'clock in the morning, my time, uh, mountain time, which is pretty early and people haven't got on and started selling stuff, but you're usually going to see chlorine closer to 20, even in the teens. And so it's one of those things that I usually don't pick up. Sometimes I will. Uh, you can get a lot for it, but it's going to sit on the flea market for a while. And shampoo is not as volatile, but it's close. You'll almost always see shampoo around 2022, but even as much as 18 or 19,000. So as far as an item taken out of raid, I usually don't pick them up unless I don't have anything else. And then one item that I absolutely will not pick up right now is the FP 100s because they weigh a shitload. They're 13 kilos, so they weigh you down. Um, and they're worth maybe 10K a slot. 15k a slot on a really good day they're kind of expensive right now because it's early but i usually buy these during my stream for like 90 maybe a hundred thousand rubles so they're just something i don't pick up because they're big and heavy and it just doesn't justify the the value of them does not justify that to me in most raids now cpu fans and rams and power cords these are all found in pcs and electric electronic start spots as well but pcs now cpu fans is going to be the most most controversial probably right out and i'm lucky when i was looking at this a second ago they were selling for like 18k and now they're 9k and that just shows you how volatile they are uh they they'll push 20,000 rubles you know when people buy these they need to buy a ton of them for uh some for barters but also for when they're upgrading their bitcoin farm or some of the other stuff in their hideout and because of that when they get bought they get bought in huge piles somebody will come by and buy 20 of these things and burn the price up so what I want to tell people is like everything else is that if you're going to pick these up, be prepared to sit on them or sell them for 9,000. I pick them up. I'll get a stack of like 10 or 15 of them and then I'll sell them for like 15,000. And most of the time they sell pretty quickly, uh, but it's still a risk. And the same applies for Ram. Now, Ram has a good barter. It's worth baseline like eight, nine K, 10 K uh, for the, the hybrid 46 barter by itself, even if you get them non-found in raid. But you can see here, they get a little cheap from time to time. They can be like that seven, 8,000. So I usually don't take them out of raid, even though occasionally they'll push 12 or 13,000 on the flea market. Now, this one, I'm probably gonna get the most comments on of people saying that it's worth more because it crafts into wires. And that's a whole conversation. Um, Needless to say, if you think you're taking, you're making money because you can craft these into wire when you take them out of raid, you're wrong. Maybe I'll explain more about that later, but uh, I don't take power cords out of raid anymore. Again, unless I'm almost empty. You can sometimes get 25, 26, 27,000 rubles out of them, but most of the time they're selling in this 18 to 19 to 20K range. And even cheaper, I'll buy them sometimes for like 13, 14K if I am crafting wires. So power cords are one of those items that yes, you might be able to get more out of them, but they are usually not worth taking out a raid. Now, this last group of items is stuff that I do loot. I pick up these things, but I sit on them. And the reason is, is because they do swing in price. Uh, Marlboros are probably the worst on the list. Right now you see they're selling for 18K and I can't show you because I don't have any found in raid, but the flea market fee on these is really high. So even when you're selling for like 18,000, I think you're paying seven, six, 7,000 uh, rubles in the flea market fee. So it kind of eats into that profit. Uh, I'll still pick them up. I'll still sell them in big stacks. People use them for the barters. Um, but it, just keep that in mind that even at like 10 or 11 K, you're still going to be not making as much money because of the flea market fee. Duct tape is one that I think a lot of people don't pay attention to because you'll see it for nine. There's not a lot on the market now. These are going to disappear and they're going to be worth a ton. But very frequently, they're like seven, eight, nine K, but they will jump to 25, 30 K. And that is because of the sick barter case trade from Jaeger. Again, another Jaeger barter. And he eats up 15 of these things every time you do a barter, which sends the price wildly through the roof. Like right now, you could probably, if you had a stack of 10, you could list them for probably 30,000 and they'd sell because somebody just wants to get that sick case barter done. They don't want to sit around and wait for more to show up. But most of the time, these things are selling under 10,000. So again, one of these C-tier items. Toothpaste, again, a barter eats these things up. Right now, they're kind of high. A lot of times you'll see them eight, seven K. But if you sell them in big stacks, you can get more. Plexiglass, more stable than the others, but again, usually less than 10K. I list for about 13 or 14, they usually sell, but again, I do it in bigger stacks. And then to round out the list, we have H202. Now there's two things for this. I take them out of raid because you can't sell them. You can sell them for 12, 13,000 all day long, but I use them to barter for water quite a bit and then use that to uh, craft with. So that's kind of where they are for me. Again, C tier item, you can take them. I take them out, but it's personal discretion. All right, now the good thing is, as we get down in these lists, they get shorter and shorter. Uh, the D tier, this is stuff that 
It's technically like 10K a slot, but I usually throw out first or don't pick up simply because I know I'm gonna replace them right away. And funny enough, that's the vase. Now you might freak out and say the vases are worth like 40K, right? 42K, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's what they vendor for if you wanna vendor it for 42,000, but that's 10,500 per slot. That means if you get four duct tapes that are potentially worth more than that or any of the other loot we've mentioned is worth more than that vase. So just keep that in mind. Now, along with that kind of 10K slot per mentality with the vase is grenades. Now, I'm not saying don't loot grenades, I'll loot them, but I usually end up throwing these out when I'm looting some other stuff because even a 60 stack of 855 is worth a lot more than a single grenade. You're gonna be lucky to get 12,000 out of each grenade. Now you can get more, but they're quite frequently gonna sit on the flea market for a while if you list them. And then you take into account the flea market fee, they're just not worth as much as you do, as you, people think they do. And they're not as worth as much as they used to be. Now they have utility, I get it. There's other uses there. Just about looting and making money though. Now again, that's that's where the long flat screwdriver comes in. Again, it vendors for about 20K, which means you're 10K slot per. But now you're fighting a two slot item in your inventory. It's only worth 10K per slot that you very easily can find better loot and not use this. So again, I usually don't even pick them up anymore. At the start of the wipe, I did. But I'm to the point now where if stuff's not worth 12, 13, 14K a slot, I won't pick it up uh it, it, it under unless i'm absolutely empty it's in a raid and we're about ready to extract now the blood sets these things for a long time were worth a bunch and i think people are still in the habit of picking them up but they're just not worth that much this is high right now it's a little bit higher usually you're seeing these things at eight nine maybe ten thousand rubles so i'll pick them up out of habit but as soon as i see them i'm like oh yeah these things aren't worth money and i throw them out because i'm going to pick up something that's worth more this last list f tier obviously is it's not I'm not here to argue and say that you shouldn't ever pick this stuff up. Um, obviously, something in your bag is worth more than nothing. The point is, is I want people to realize how unvaluable these items are, regardless of whether they've got a full bag or not. So for me, a lot of times I won't loot stuff because it takes more time for me to sort through and throw shit out uh, that is worth maybe 20,000 rubles. And if I just never pick it up in the first place, I have that empty slot. If I see a motor, I'm not fishing around trying to find the four pieces of trash to throw out. I can pick up the motor right away. That's the, that's the usefulness of it here. So some of these are going to piss people off because they love looting them. Um, and that's fine. It's just, it's just my perspective on how you loot. So F tier croutons. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, oh my God, I can sell croutons for 20, 30, 40,000 rubles. You are correct. And you know what? You're probably losing money because your flea market fee is probably higher than that. Even with my minimum, my maximum flea market reduction, which I have right now on my hideout. Um, and I can't show you directly simply because I don't have a found and raid one, but I've got a 43% flea market reduction. Um, that's really high. When I sell croutons for 20,000 rubles, I get about 9,000. I sell them for 15,000, I get about 9,000. Croutons are not worth taking out a raid because a flea market fee absolutely crushes you. Keep that in mind. If you're finding them because you need them for other stuff, great. Otherwise, do not pick them up. Now, PC CPUs. Uh, sucks because it's something you get out and you'd think it'd be worth a lot of money. Usually not. Usually less than 10K. Same thing with chainlets and horses. There was a period where these were worth a little bit, but the chainlets are worth like six, seven K. Horses are worth maybe 14 at a best bet. So don't pick them up. The three slaughters, the Xenos and Shushes, and occasionally you'll see Shastrillo get over 30,000. Occasionally, still not worth looting. They make it a pain in the ass to do any kind of Tetris in your bag because three slots are just weird and they're not worth it. They're worth maybe 20 to 25K most of the time. And DVDs and hard drives kind of fall into that same category. They're two slots that can make Tetris a little bit more difficult. And yes, they have uses for other stuff, but you should buy them. The other silly people who are willing to sell these for nine, 10,000 a piece or 5K a slot or less, buy them from them and craft, but don't be the one that's doing that. Don't take them out of raid. They're not worth that much money. And the weapon repair, repair kit, as exciting as it is to find it, it's a six slot that is worth 50K at most. You got tons of these people trying to sell them for euros in here, maybe 55K. We'll look here and what it sells to therapist for. You know, you're talking, or I'm sorry, not therapist. Who's it, uh, mechanic? I forget which one you sell it to. 55K right there. That's what it's worth. It's not even worth it six slots. So it might be cool to find it. If you're doing something else, you want to keep it, great. But I don't even pick up weapon repair kits anymore simply because they're kind of heavy and they're not worth their slots. Now, helmets. I know lots of people love picking up helmets because they're easy to vendor or you can use them, but when you're talking price per slot, they're usually not worth it. There's a few that are, 
but most of these, like these ones here that I'm showing, they're not worth picking up unless you're insurance frauding and put it on your head or you don't have anything else in your bag because as you can see here, every one of them is worth at best 35,000 and that's if it's undamaged. Um, but you're talking 30,000 less, 18,000 for a Ratnik, you know, and the, the peen helmets are even lower than that. And I understand the, the versatility of being able to sell it to Ragman and not have to think about it. And, and it's just quick, easy 30 or 35K, great. Price per slot though, what this whole video is about, they're just not worth as much as you think. Unless you get a U-lock or some of the higher end tier four and tier five helmets, um, they just don't vendor for that much. But this is the list. Um, I hope it was enlightening and helpful for you guys and you got something out of it. Uh, if so, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're, we're pushing for that 100K, we're really close. I'm also on Twitch. If you have questions or you wanna discuss some of these items, come say hi over there while I'm streaming. Happy to discuss it and talk about it and explain why I came up with some of these, uh, these numbers and ways of thinking. But otherwise, I appreciate you watching. I wish you the best of luck in your raids and we'll see you in Tarkov.